Welcome to episode 10, the Bear the Day for Green Building 2022, the conference, the digital conference. Building Green is the flagship campaign of the PhilGBC events and consists of the year-round activities that encourage participation in green building advocacy. I am Rowena Elida from the PhilGBC National Secretariat and I will be today's facilitator. Thank you to the PhilGBC Board of Trustees for initiating this event. BOT Chair Mr. Edgar Sabidong, Vice President and Chief Sustainability Officer, Arthurland Corporation, Vice Chair Ms. Rowena Ramos, Principal, Ecotectonica, Secretary Ms. Elizabeth Mendoza, Managing Director, Monocrete Construction, Philippines, and Treasurer Mr. Raymond Rufino, CEO, Neo Property Management. The members of the board, Ms. Catherine Ilagan, President and COO, Philinvesta Labang, Inc., Mr. Felino Palafox Jr., Principal, Palafox Associate. Mr. Hener Liwana, Junior Partner, GFN Partners Architects. Mr. Luis Shamon, Country Manager, San Gabon, Philippines. Ms. Audrey Belpo, Managing Director, World Home Depot Corporation. Mr. Francisco Arellano, Consultant of Manila Water Services, Inc. And Mr. Gabriel Maria Angelo Cascante. I would also like to acknowledge the CEO of the PhilGBC, Mr. Christopher De La Cruz, and Executive Director, Ms. Maria Anna Tungol, and the PhilGBC National Secretariat for organizing this conference. We would like to thank our members and sustaining corporate sponsors that support the program of the PhilGBC and for making our activities possible. Our Diamond Sustaining Sponsor, Neo Property Management Inc., our Gold Sustaining Sponsor, Wall Vision Corporation, and our Silver Sustaining Sponsors, Arthalan Corporation, Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines, Ecotectonica, Firefly Electric and Lighting Corporation, GF and Partners Architects, Gigatech Inc., KPI Elevators, Monocrete Construction Philippines, San Guban Philippines, SMCC Philippines, Surface Repair Solutions, and World Home Depot Corporation. We would like to thank the following sponsors and strategic partners for their support in making the, this Building Green Conference 2022 possible. Our Diamond Sustaining Sponsor and National Secretariat Sponsor, Neo Property Management, Inc., our Gold Sustaining Sponsor, Wall Vision Corporation, our BG 2022 Gold Strategic Partners, Aboitis Infracapital Economic Estates, and City Homes Builder and Development Incorporated, our BG 2022 Silver Strategic Partners, First Balfour, Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines, Wall Vision Corporation, and our BG 2022 Bronze Strategic Partners, AGC Asia Pacific, Botanica Nature Residences, Philinvest City, Datem Incorporated, FPD Asia Property Services, Monarchy Construction Philippines. Before we continue, please be reminded of the following event guidelines. This webinar will be recorded by the PhilGBC National Secretariat for Documentations Purposes. We encourage your active participation during the event. You may ask your questions using the question box in the GoToWebinar panel, and questions that you will raise will be addressed during the discussion period. Upon request, an electronic certificate of attendance will be issued by the PhilGBC National Secretariat to your registered email address, provided that you are present for more than 50% of the allotted time for each session and have completed the feedback survey, which will be sent to your registered email address after the event, and requested a copy of your certificate through events at philgbc.org. The Bear the Day episode will showcase current tools and programs that focuses on sustain sustainable design and development of buildings and wide-scale projects. 
Last year, the PhilGBC launched the pilot implementation of Bear Differ Districts as a tool that focuses on sustainable design and development of wide-scale projects. It addresses the environmental, social, and economic impacts in communities and campuses. This year, the Bear Differ Districts version 1.0.0 will be launched for official use of the public. I will be presenting an overview of the Bear Differ Districts version 1.0.0 pilot and pilot project teams for Verde districts will be sharing their experience and insights on how they incorporated their sustainability initiatives in planning, implementing, and managing their district projects. Our four project proponents that participated in the pilot implementation of the Verde districts will be presenting in this episode. Their participation in the pilot helped in the development of the tool and the usability of the system before finalizing the first version of the Pair de Districts. We'll have Mr. Rafael Fernandez de Mesa, President of Lima Land Inc., presenting Lima Estate. Mr. Rafael Fernandez de Mesa also serves as the head of the Economic Estates and Industrial Anchored Mixed Use Estates of Aboitis Infra Capital. This leadership and extensive knowledge in operations sales and marketing business development, and project management has been instrumental in driving Aboitis Infra Capital to the organization it is today. And locally a global, locally and global recognized infrastructure company that um, enables businesses and uplifts communities whilst putting sustainability at the forefront of its development. He earned his bachelor's degree in business administration, major in international business from Florida International University, and has acquired certifications from MIT Sloan Executive Education and UC Berkeley Executive Education. We will also have Mr. John Philip Wang, Executive Vice President, City Home Builders and Development Inc., presenting Leora Homes Night. Mr. Wang graduated from the University of British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada. He has 20 years of experience in low-cost housing industry with only one employer, City Home Builders and Development Inc. He is also a licensed real estate broker since 2013. And we'll have Ms. Cristina Samantha Pobre, Sustainability Manager, Arthurland Corporation, presenting Savina Park. As Arthurland Sustainability Manager, who oversees the company's approach to sustainability and its execution in all projects, with a decade of experience in built industry, she specializes in sustainable buildings, serving as the lead accredited professional, certified Verde professional, and edge expert. She got her master's degree in building energy and environmental performance modeling from Cardiff University in United Kingdom. And in 2019, Sam led the successful certification of the country's first certified net zero carbon project the Arthurland Century Pacific Tower. She continues to drive the decarbonization of the company's development portfolio to achieve net zero operations by 2030. We'll also have Mr. Don Don Marie Ubaldo, who is the first vice president for the project development township of Philinvest Alabang, Inc., a subsidiary of Philinvest Development Corporation, presenting Philinvest City. He successfully led the planning and implementation of Philinvest City's master plan, the first and only central business district in the Philippines with LEED Gold and Verde certification. He, is also, uh, he also has a major role in the development of other Philinvest townships, including City de Marie in Cebu, Philinvest Mimosa, Leisure Park, Leisure City in Pampanga, and Philinvest New Clark City in Tarlac. After all the four projects, we'll have time to ask our speakers questions on their district project. We will also feature two of the latest Verde certified building projects. Um, we'll have Mr. Francis Rodriguez. Uh, he is the Senior Technical Manager, Business Development Technical Planning Group Head for Vertical Projects of Cebu Land Masters. Presenting Latitude, Corporation, Latitude Corporate Center, Mr. Rodriguez is also a licensed and registered architect, certified Baird professional with over 19 years of experience in design and construction, handling residential, mixed-use development, townships and hospitality planning, sustainable design practices, 
former instructor of the Department of Architecture in the University of San Carlos, and past president of the United Architects of the Philippines Cebu chapter. We'll also have Mr. Delphine Angelo Wenceslao, Chief Executive Officer of DM Wenceslao and Associates Inc., presenting Pargal Phase 1. With over 20 years of experience in financial analysis, leasing and brokerage development, project management, and property management, Mr. Wenceslao is currently the Chief Executive Officer of DM Wenceslao and Associates Inc., developer of Asiana City, a 204 hectare mixed use district fronting Manila Bay, envisioned to be the entertainment and lifestyle center of the Philippines. He is also the managing director of various subsidiaries under DMWAI, including Asiana Holdings Inc. and Asiana Residential Holdings Company Inc., Asiana Real Estate Services and Management Corporation, and New City Solutions Corp. Mr. Wenceslao is a global governing trustee of the Urban Land Institute, or ULI, a member of the Philippines Association of Real Estate Brokers, PAREB, IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines, ITBPAP, and the Management Association of the Philippines and Pasay Mahati Realtors Board and Massachusetts Institute of Technology Education Council, Philippines. We will be opening the floor for questions after the Verde Certified Buildings presentation, and you may send your questions for our speakers using the question box and will be addressed during the open forum. Mr. Wen Ramos, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees of the PhilGBC, will be delivering this episode's closing remarks. <clears throat> Since the launch of the pilot implementation of Verde District's Rating 2 last year, we were able to conduct consultations and implement the system through pilot projects as we finalized the first version of the Verde District's Rating Tool. The PhilGBC is continuously improving the Verde Green Building Rating System based on, based on current best practices and technologies, changes in regulatory requirements, improvements in the industry standards, and experience and insights gained in the use of Verde in green building projects. Now we are expanding the scope of Verde to include the planning and implementation of communities and campuses. The development of a rating tool for wide-scale projects have always been a consideration under the Verde program since its early development stages. Since Verde for Buildings version 1.0.0, the members of the PhilGBC and its committees have already recognized the need to develop a tool for the planning and implementing of green districts. They recognize that there are specific requirements and priority areas for districts that are different from the requirements for buildings and tenant projects because of its size, scale, and scope. To ensure the quality of the tool, Verde is developed in line with international standards for standards development and harmonized with national and international standards and environmental standards. Major versions of Verde undergo the consensus building process to ensure the scheme is responsive to the market by allowing the industry to comment on the draft tool. We have undergone multiple commenting periods for the development of Verde districts. From committee draft approved by the Verde committee, the council draft incorporating the feedback from the PhilGBC members and the public draft, which was uh, concluded last uh, August. We have finalized the uh, final draft and was approved by the Board of Trustees of the PhilGBC and will be launched today. Verde Districts focuses on the sustainable development of wide-scale projects and addresses the environmental, social, and economic impacts in the planning and implementation of communities and campuses. For the purposes of this tool, a Verde District project must have a distinct and clear boundary of influence, 
defined governing body of authority and influence to implement policies, action plans, and programs for the whole district, and the accountability in managing the activities to meet the sustainability goals and performance targets for the whole district. Where the district's project must have a representative that has a top level of authority and influence in assigning roles and responsibilities to the project stakeholders and in controlling allocated resources for the project. The tool applies to the holistic planning and implementation of communities and campuses. During stage one planning, you must establish the sustainability goals and performance targets for your project, conduct your assessment and review of relevant laws, regulations, and standards to determine your priorities and strategies and develop policies, action plans, and programs to achieve the goals and targets for your project. While during stage two implementation, you must implement your policies, action plans, and programs, monitor and record your outcomes, of their implementation and evaluate the effectiveness of the implemented policies, action plans, and programs for its continual improvement. Projects at the planning stage will only be assessed at stage one planning, while projects at the implementation stage will be assessed under both stage one planning and stage two implementation. The tool is applicable to wide scale projects at the planning and implement implementation stages. The scope includes the building and infrastructures owned and or managed by a project owner, the systems and utilities shared by all buildings, and the project spaces where communities, facilities, and amenities are located. For the project type, communities refers to privately owned and managed projects comprised of multiple buildings with different owners referred to as locators. And campuses refers to privately owned and managed projects comprised of multiple buildings owned by the project owner. The, the tool applies to different occupancy types, including residential subdivisions, commercial estates, industrial parks, educational institutions, and healthcare facilities. The core framework of Berdy districts was developed to incorporate <coughs> sustainable development through a holistic approach. The framework addresses the environmental, social, and economic aspects of green districts. This ensures that there is a holistic view in achieving the various priorities for your project during its planning and implementation. The core framework of Verde Districts is aligned with the framework of Verde Buildings version 4 to ensure that the contribution of green building projects located within your project are aligned with your overall sustainability goals and performance targets. The development of credits under Berde is guided by this framework to ensure each credit is addressing a clear sustainability target, providing clear requirements that may be policy, people, process, product, or performance requirements, applying to different stages of a project life cycle, and addressing concerns that are specific to the project type and occupancy type where appropriate. The first category under Berde District's core framework is the management category. Management focuses on the sustainable processes and practices for the effective management of the planning and implementation of districts. Sustainable management practices are done through collaborative and integrated processes that help in identifying the most sustainable and cost-effective strategies and programs for your project. Districts depend on the environment and ecosystem services, not only to sustain, but also to enhance the quality of life. And when we protect our environment, we contribute to the regeneration of its natural systems, resulting in the increase of services they provide, establishing environmentally resilient districts. The use of land and ecology category encourages project owners to plan and implement strategies for social cohesion, physical activities, and places of respite. This category promotes the effective site selection, the mindful use of land, and the reduction of negative impact of construction and operations to the natural environment and local ecology. Access to affordable and reliable energy is critical in determining the quality of life of the project users. The built environment consumes over, over two-thirds of the world's energy and account for more than 70% of global CO2 emissions. 
efficient energy systems can play a huge role in combating climate change. The energy category focuses on managing, reducing, or eliminating the excessive use of energy in projects. Credits under the energy category are focused to award the energy performance of projects, whether in reducing the potential or actual energy consumption of the whole project, or in utilizing on-site or off-site renewable energy for the whole project. Water is the lifeline of any district. However, availability and access have been a major issue in many communities. Water demand has been increasing in urban areas and is stressing freshwater reserves, creating a recurrent shortage of water. The water category focuses on effective management and reduction of the overall water demand of your district projects, as well as the effective management of wastewater to result in less environmental impact and even use the opportunity for an alternative water source. The waste category focuses on properly managing solid waste to reduce the waste generated in the project and divert waste from landfills. Effective waste management at the source lessens the need for waste infrastructure, lessens financial burden in managing solid waste, and reduces the negative impact of projects to water, air, and land resources. The responsible management of waste is one of the essential aspects in ensuring the sustainability of projects. And waste focuses on reducing the waste generated in the project, whether at the planning or implementation stages of your district project. This is done by eliminating waste where possible, minimizing waste where appropriate, and recycling and reusing materials in your project. The materials category stimulates the local economy by encouraging procurement from manufacturers within proximity of the district and provides social benefits to the community by procuring from local artisans and community groups. The use of locally manufactured and Filipino products in a project offers positive social and economic benefits by supporting and engaging local businesses and communities. And the materials category focuses on the procurement and use of selected materials in the project that are not harmful to the environment. Districts have a great influence on how our communities and cities are designed managed and transformed. The need of users going to and from work or homes is an important aspect when planning your project. The proper transportation planning for your project presents an opportunity for mitigating potential carbon emissions, as well as provide social benefits for the building users and the community at large. It may even spur economic growth for local businesses in the communities by ensuring the access of your users and mobility in the community. The transportation category improves the mobility and reduces the use of vehicles within the project by providing amenities to users and increasing the diversity of establishments for daily necessities. The health and well-being category focuses on providing a healthy environment where users and the general public can live, work, and play. Health and well-being prioritizes actions that improve the health and well-being of users within the district and encourages the development of programs for on-site food production and physical activities. Emissions promotes accounting and effectively managing the emissions of projects to minimizing the contribution of the project to climate change. The community engagement category focuses on actively involving the community in addressing their socioeconomic needs and improving their resilience. Community engagement also recognizes the project's contribution in creating a distinct identity, in improving accessibility and ease of movement, and providing infrastructures to support digital connectivity. And the last category in the core framework of Pedri districts is the economic opportunity category, which focuses on supporting local businesses and providing employment opportunities for local labor and green jobs to stimulate and strengthen the local economy within the district. Economic opportunity also ensures affordability by providing affordable housing units within the project.
So how can you get your project BERD districts uh, BERD certified? If your project is at the conceptual early design or master planning stage, you must register and undergo stage one planning. Stage one involves the assessment of the policies, action plans, and programs established during your planning period. The assessment will also involve how these policies and action plans and programs will be implemented when your project is at the implementation stage. If your project is a newly constructed or at an early existing district, you must register for and undergo stage one planning and stage two implementation. Projects will undergo simultaneous, simultaneous assessment of both stage one planning and stage two implementation. Stage two will involve the assessment of the implemented policies, action plans, and programs for your district, as well as the outcomes of the implementation and how these outcomes are evaluated for its continual improvement. In addition, stage two implementation will involve an on-site assessment to verify the implementation of your policies, your action plans, and programs for your district. When registering for certification, you must understand what stages applies to your project. And this allows you to plan for the whole development of your project and understand the principles behind green buildings for the planning and implementation for your district project. If your project is in conceptual early design and planning stage, you should use stage one planning for your project. And if your project is an existing district, then you should use stage one planning and stage two implementation. You may contact the Berdi Program Secretariat and confirm what stage applies to your project. A Berdi star rating will be awarded to the project once you achieve the equivalent weighting during the certification process. One star will be awarded to projects that has achieved 51% to 60% weighting two stars for achieving 61% to 70%, three stars for achieving 71% to 80%, four stars for achieving 81% to 90%, and five stars for achieving 91% to 100% for world-class green district project. We encourage that you get your projects BERDI certified. Be the first to use the BERDI Districts version 1.0.0 today. Register your project and successfully complete the BERDI certification process to get your projects BERDI certified. For registration concerns and to assist you in registering your project, please contact Mr. Chester de la Cruz through email at verde at philgbc.org. The, the pilot implementation of the tool was open to the PhilGBC members who committed in using the system and undergoing the formal assessment and certification process to contribute to the development of the tool. Thank you and congratulations to the project proponents of Berde District's pilot. Liora Homes Naik by City Homes Builders and Development Inc. located in Naik Cavite is a residential community awarded with a Berde 3 stars rating under the Berde District's pilot version. It is the first residential community certified under Berde District. Lima State of Lima Land Inc., a 758-hectare industrial estate located in Lipa, Batangas, awarded a Berde 5 star rating under Berde District's pilot version. It is the first industrial estate certified under Berde District. Okay. Located in Binyan, Laguna, the Sabina Park project of Tasnew Inc., a subsidiary of Arthurland Corporation, is an 8-hectare master plan mixed-use community. It is awarded a Verde 5-star rating under Verde District's pilot version and the first mixed-use community certified under Verde District. Philinvest City is a 244-hectare master plan township in Alabang, Montinlupa, and it is awarded a Berde 3 stars rating under Berde District's pilot and the first CBD certified under Berde District's pilot version. 
And as part of the Berde Education, we will be hosting the first public class for the Berde District's rating scheme. During the online episode 12, the Berde Professionals District, we will be hosting the Berde Professionals Training Course on Berde District's version 1.0.0 on, on the 22nd to the 23rd of September 2022. Individuals that successfully complete the training and pass the qualifying examination will be awarded with the title Certified Berde Professional or CBP for Berde Districts. You may access the latest version of Berde at berdeonline.org. And for our next presentation, let us welcome Mr. Rafael Fernandez de Mesa, President Lima Land Inc. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rafael Fernandez de Mesa, and I'm the head of Aboitis Infracapital Economic Estates and president of Lima Land. It's a pleasure to be here today to talk about the sustainability programs and initiatives that we have incorporated and continue to build upon at Aboitis Infracapital Economic Estates. Over the past 30 years, we have been committed to advancing industries and life while ensuring that we balance the interests of people, planet, and profit. We have done so by upholding best practices in environmental management, social responsibility, and good governance within our economic estates, as well as in the communities wherein we operate. Aboitis Infracapital Economic Estates has three decades of experience delivering innovative concepts through its mixed-use estates, which are anchored on industry and complemented by a mix of commercial, residential, and institutional uses. Our efforts have been recognized both locally and abroad, and we have received numerous accolades citing our leadership in industrial anchor development, which today covers nearly 1,500 hectares of development and which has helped to generate nearly 100,000 jobs within our economic estates. Our economic estates are located in Luzon and the Visayas and include MES2 Estate, a 63-hectare PESA-registered zone in Lapu-Lapu City adjacent to the Mactan Cebu International Airport, West Cebu Estate, a 540-hectare PESA-registered zone in Balamban, just over 50 kilometers from Cebu City, and also known as the shipbuilding capital of the Philippines. And lastly, our largest project, Lima Estate, a nearly 800 hectare PESA registered zone in Lipa and Malvar, Batangas, situated at the heart of Calabarzon, the Philippines' most well-known and premier center of industry. While we are proud of our track record in industrial development, we recently celebrated what may be two of our most important achievements to date. Over the past year, we have been working with the Philippine Green Building Council on a pilot program for Berde District Certification. Berde is a tool utilized by the Philippine Green Building Council to assess, measure, monitor, and certify the performance of green building projects that go above and beyond existing laws, regulations, and mandatory standards. It's important to note that the tool is not only recognized as a benchmark locally, but is also guided by the World Green Building Council's internationally recognized standards for green development. We are honored to be one of the first to receive Berde District certification for Lima Estate, and we are also very proud to have set the bar high for those that will follow by having achieved the maximum five-star rating. In the process, we also became the very first industrial estate and the largest project in the Philippines to achieve this certification. Adding to that, Lima State also recently won the Philippine Green Building Council Leadership in Sustainable Design and Performance Award for the Commercial Subcategory, an award that recognizes pioneering green building projects that set new benchmarks for sustainability. These achievements are validation of our commitment to sustainable development, including the contribution of our projects to health and well being, community engagement, and economic opportunities. We recognize the responsibility that comes with leadership given how many people our projects impact. At present, Lima State is home to upwards of 150 world-class companies and leaders in industry that directly employ over 60,000 people 
who using the Peza Neta multiplier positively impact the lives of about a million people. Lipa and Malvar, where Lima State is located, are both thriving communities with a combined population count of close to half a million people, drawn in by the economic activity that Lima State has helped to generate. Now, while industry has been the catalyst for what Lima State has become, Lima State is quickly emerging as more than just a leading industrial state. It has also become a center for commerce in the Batangas province, thanks to its 30 hectare central business district. We envision the central business district to continue creating high value added jobs outside of Metro Manila and to support Lima State in becoming a sustainable and smart economic hub, not just to rival the best in the country, but one that will serve as a benchmark in the Asia Pacific region. Lima Central Business District is very much alive today and an important part of the everyday lives of Batangueños. To serve the over 60,000 employees and the flourishing communities within and around Lima State are various commercial components, such as the outlets at Lipa, which is the largest outdoor lifestyle mall in the area, where you'll find popular brands such as H&M, Nike, and Adidas, as well as a number of restaurants and entertainment offerings. This is also where you'll find the Boiti Spitch, which is the largest multi-sports artificial turf in all of Luzon. Complementing the outlets is Lima Exchange, which is where you'll find your everyday essentials, including Lima State's public transport terminal, where commuters are transported in, out, and around the estate. At the heart of Lima Central Business District, there will be a seven-tower office park built in a campus-like format, where earlier this year, we broke ground on the first building, Lima Tower One, which is a PESA certified and Berde accredited green building. It's meant to cater primarily to BPO companies looking to access the abundant and highly skilled labor force in the area. And Lima Central Business District is the perfect place given we already have the ecosystem required by the BPO industry in place, which includes world-class and redundant infrastructure, lifestyle and everyday essentials, as well as housing and transportation. Surrounding the office park, we have commercial lots, which represent a unique opportunity for investors that are looking to capitalize on an already thriving location, as well as on the anticipated economic expansion outside of Metro Manila. Selling to third parties and like-minded developers will also allow us to expedite the fulfillment of our vision more quickly. Finally, there's also a wide array of housing options within and in close proximity to Lima Estate, such as Aboitis Lands, the Villages at Lepa, and the Campo Verde and Summer Hill subdivisions. For shorter stays, you'll also find Lima Park Hotel within Lima Central Business District, which is a 136-room, four-star hotel with ballroom facilities that can host anything from weddings to conventions. One of the foundations of Lima State's value proposition is that it is able to leverage the strength of its affiliates within the Aboitis Group, one of the country's oldest and largest conglomerates with investments across a number of major industries throughout the country. For instance, power distribution, a fundamental need of any business and community, is operated by Lima Enerzone, which is part of the Aboitis Power Group, one of the nation's top power producers with a diverse portfolio of hydroelectric, geothermal, solar, and thermal generation facilities, as well as being the owner of the second and third largest distribution utilities in the country. Its expertise allows the businesses and community within Lima State to power up through reliable, reasonable, and responsible energy solutions. In addition, water distribution and wastewater service, critical necessities for a business or community to flourish, is operated by Lima Water, part of the Boitis Infra Capital Group, which has investments in bulk water as well as provincial water distribution systems in 20 provinces throughout the country. Its expertise ensures the long-term availability of water for the growing Lima State community, while also ensuring that it meets the highest environmental standards. On site, we also have the presence of Aboitis Construction, the construction arm of the Aboitis Group, which is currently constructing Lima State's 50-hectare industrial expansion, and which through its almost 50-year track record is equipped to service the mechanical, electrical, and site development work needs for locators' factories, warehouses, and commercial buildings. 
While we are proud of what we have been able to accomplish, we have even bigger aspirations going forward. In a rapidly changing and competitive world, we realize that the only way forward is to elevate and transform the way we do business, which is why at Aboitis Infracapital Economic Estates, we are committed to putting sustainability at the forefront of everything we do. For instance, our power utility, Lima Enerzone, partially sources energy from renewable sources, which include geothermal and hydro, while the retail electricity supplier of Aboitis Power delivers 18 megawatts of renewable energy from its geothermal power plants to Lima's contestable customers. In addition, our own developments within Lima's central business district, as well as the large majority of our industrial locators, utilize solar roof-mounted systems to help cover their energy demand, and which combined produce a total of 17 megawatts of power from solar energy. Contributing to the responsible management of our precious water resources, Lima Water is nearing completion of Lima State's smart water network, wherein the water facilities will become interconnected and intelligent through the use of technology. The smart water network will lead to better operational efficiency and savings, as well as more responsible use of natural resources. Lima Water is also an accredited environmental testing laboratory of the DENR, affirming its commitment to outstanding water quality testing standards. It is the first and the only accredited laboratory of its kind within an industrial park in the Philippines, and it also has begun to extend its services to the neighboring communities outside of Lima Estate. Looking ahead, as we continue to welcome new locators and businesses to Lima Estate, there will be continuous transformation of the estate through the introduction of new product lines, additional sustainability initiatives, as well as through the introduction of smart city features, which are also meant to support the Aboitis Group's transformation efforts towards becoming the Philippines' first techglomerate. Most recently, we've been working with a globally renowned urban infrastructure and technology firm to help us turn vision into reality. We've finalized the framework and strategy and have begun to roll out priority initiatives. These initiatives were prioritized based on a number of factors such as whether they will generate cost savings or productivity improvements to us and or our locators, whether they are in line with best-in-class practice, typically associated with the world's movement towards net zero, and whether they elevate our position amongst competitors. One important initiative we're working on is decarbonizing our transport system. This will be done through traditional means such as improving walkability and bikeability, by providing housing within the boundaries of the estate to cater to a wider range of economic classes, primarily those that work in the industrial area. And early next year, we're very excited to be rolling out a fleet of electric minibuses to operate the Inter-Lima Estate shuttle system. With the population within Lima Estate expected to grow to 100,000 people by the end of the decade, and with a rapidly flourishing central business district, we recognize that there are also opportunities to involve individuals and smaller businesses within and around the estate in our initiatives. In the fourth quarter, Lima Estate is set to launch a compost to fertilizer program to manage solid food waste gathered from stakeholders within the estate. The project includes the construction of a centralized composting facility that will initially serve the needs of the estate and later on, it will also be able to serve the neighboring communities. Furthermore, in collaboration with Aboitis Group, an urban farm will soon rise within Lima's central business district, intended to increase awareness and empower the community to grow their own food, as well as to increase production in a sustainable manner. In closing, I'd like to thank the Philippine Green Building Council for the opportunity to talk about how Aboitis Infracapital Economic Estates are expanding, elevating, and transforming the way we do things. Doing so will ensure our economic estates adhere to the requirements of an increasingly sophisticated and discerning market, helping to establish the Philippines as a preferred investment destination in the region and allowing us to continue creating high-value-added jobs that uplift the lives of millions of Filipinos. As we continue to expand, elevate and transform, we also look forward to strengthening the partnership with the Philippine Green Building Council by certifying the buildings within Lima Estate 
as well as our economic estates in Cebu, where we also are expanding, elevating, and transforming. Once again, thank you, and please enjoy the rest of today's program. Thank you very much, Mr. Fernandez de Mesa. Now we'll have uh, our next presentation um, will be uh, from Mr. John Philip Wang, Executive Vice President, City Home Builders and Development Inc. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for having us here at the 16th Annual Philippine Green Building Council's Building Green Conference. It is a privilege for me to represent our company, City Homes Builder and Development Inc. We are a small, low-cost housing developer with the majority of our operations in Cavite. I've been asked to share with you our journey thus far with PhilGBC, specifically Lior Homes Nike, our company's candidate project under the Berde District's pilot program. The first thing I must confess, however, is that uh, Berde Districts was not what gave birth to Leora. Leora was born during the COVID-19 lockdown when we were stuck working at home. It evolved over two years of development and is the first of our next generation of city homes projects. These next generation projects aim to incorporate sustainable features that will bring our company closer to a long-term objective of net carbon zero. For Leora Nike, its features include the following. Solar panel systems rated at 1.64 kilowatt peak per unit, equivalent to about 30% power savings. Rainwater harvest tanks of uh, 700 liter capacity per unit, which will reach about 35% water savings. Freshwater storage tanks of about 500 liters per unit. Four chamber septic tanks, uh, up from the standard three chamber septic tanks required by government, uh, including outfall septage treatment chambers. We will also be using anti-termite and fire retardant construction materials uh, and introducing anti-heat and anti-theft features uh, and uh, a dedicated network of 3,500 meters of bicycle lanes. Upon completion in or around 2026 to 2027, the Aura Homes Nike and its 3,345 townhouse units will be the biggest residential rooftop solar farm in Southeast Asia capable of generating just under 6,000 megawatt hours of clean solar power per year, and will also be the biggest non-government residential rainwater harvest facility capable of capturing around 200 million liters of rainwater per year. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, other sustainability measures enabled by this project include the following. Around 4,225 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions avoided annually, uh, around 2.1 million kilograms of coal prevented from being burned for power annually, just under 7,000 trees planted per year, around uh, 2,000 hectares worth of U.S. grade forests worth of carbon sequestration per year, around 7,000 units of 50-pound uh, oxygen tanks produced per year, 40% less carbon emissions from our cement partners' new reduced carbon cement, and about 1 million pesos in power bill savings for the eventual homeowners association per year. The Berde District's program and its qualifying criteria confirm to us that the features we put into Leora Homes Nike are in line with what the program is looking for. Now, these numbers may seem staggering in magnitude, but they are simply a product of economies of scale. It is our belief that there is no such thing as a project too big or small to accredit under Berde districts. Needless to say, however, our participation with Berde did have its share of challenges. The first challenge was that our co-participants represent great Philippine conglomerates with immense resources that could render our efforts futile at best. However, Phil GBC was very consistent in encouraging us here at City Homes to stay the course, to keep up our efforts, and to see the pilot study to its completion. Another challenge that we faced was that Bird Districts set high standards for a project's prospective performance and delivery. Respectable standards, yes, but not easy, despite our having brought in the features and initiatives that we have into the study. Thankfully, our industrial partners were ready and willing to provide the necessary data, computations, studies, and materiel that helped Leora Nike ultimately secure a three-star rating out of a possible five stars. 
This project then is a product of solid teamwork. For those who wish to join the Go Green movement, you may even opt to confer with consultants to help you score in the rating system. Creative interpretation of the criteria may also surprise you. The Berdy team is open to alternate pathways to secure credits. It doesn't hurt to ask. Some of the criteria under Berdy districts require not just securing of permits and licenses with local and national government agencies in line with standard real estate housing project developments, but fundamental changes to the way a housing developer conducts its operations. By this, I mean collaboration with local government offices and homeowners alike for community programs and changes in lifestyles and habits that will keep a subdivision in line with the best practices being promulgated by bearded districts. Again, not exactly the easiest of tasks given the amount of re-education that is needed. There are other elements still that are requisite to success which may be beyond the developer's immediate control. A bearded district's location must be of minimal risk to flooding or exposure to potential natural disasters while also being accessible to mass transportation. This makes your site selection important, but it is not an end-all be-all. Some challenges on the site may just need mitigation, such as better drainage systems in flood-prone areas or maybe putting up a couple of shuttles for more secluded locations. Furthermore, the developer must be eternally vigilant in the quality of its construction from individual dwelling units and all other man-made features within the Berde projects to maximize disaster resiliency. The developer must also be fully supportive of local jobs, local businesses, environmentally responsible procurement practices, active lifestyles for its residents, all while keeping its products and price points within affordable reach of our countrymen in line with housing regulations such as BP220 and PD957. We can infer then that Bearded Districts isn't just about green features per se. It aims to be holistic in its criteria, including developmental and environmental aspects, but also elements related to livelihood and proximity between work and home, which contribute to the principle of balance, which is the hardest thing to achieve in life, as opposed to success, which many people identify with. All these challenges might come across as very daunting, and sure, it is right and proper to acknowledge such a perception. But then again, nothing that is truly good for you is meant to be easy. So then, why did City Homes choose to engage with Bearded Districts? Well, there are two answers. The long answer is, our vision for the project was to seek the what's next, to further improve our trade craft as a developer. We would be foolish to keep squandering free renewable resources such as sunlight and rainwater, which could be harnessed to reduce the overall effects of urbanization on our planet. And the Berdy Districts not only acknowledges uh, our project's merits, but in fact challenged our company to do even more than what we thought was already next level. The short answer, on the other hand, is why not? We can, we should, and thus we did. Now, how did City Homes and Leora Homes Nike achieve 77 out of 120 total possible Berdy Districts points? Here are some reflections from our participation in the pilot project. Number one, don't try to do it all yourself. Find industrial partners that will work with your company who are experts in their trade craft. They and their products and services form part of the total package. But also, it is not just products that avant-garde suppliers offer. Berdy Districts requires that a developer changes its thinking and ways of designing, operating, and delivering its projects. It is teamwork that achieves this. Number two, don't be too focused on gross margins and net incomes. Part of the reason for vying for a Berdy Districts project must be more than just the bottom line. Number three, define what your purpose is. You must find a sense of fulfillment in working to achieve a Berdy Districts grade project more than just accolades, recognition, or profits. Number four, what you learn must be just as enjoyable as the prizes that you stand to earn. Number five, seek to improve continuously. It is only right and proper for any man or organization to strive and be the best that they can be in their profession, business model, or tradecraft. But perhaps it is just as important, right, and proper to leave some room for improvement to the next generation, in this case, your next project. And lastly, how badly do you want it? If you cannot answer this question in the affirmative, looking at yourself in the mirror, then maybe Berdy Districts is not for you, plain and simple. All that being said, I am happy to share that throughout the entire pilot study 
PhilGBC was supportive and open to our ideas, suggestions, and even interpretations of the various criteria. While yes, we went into bearded districts with features that it could individually score on multiple criteria, it is important to note that Philippine Green Building Council's inputs and guidance played a major role in our having secured the three-star rating. It is equally important to emphasize that three out of five stars is not a mandatory target for developers. Bearded district certifications range from a minimum of 50 to 59 points for one star, or 60 to 69 points for two stars. The three-star rating ranges from 70 to 79 points. Allow me to illustrate. For example, if a developer is able to score fully on the following 17 criteria, it can already secure a one-star certification. These include project management, owner responsibility, green building professionals, responsible contractors and suppliers, stakeholder consultation, disaster resilience, accessibility, digital infra, local business support and labor, affordable housing, public open spaces, flood risk management, local procurement, mass transportation, ambient air, and places of respite. That's 51 points. Add in the following and you can achieve two stars. For example, ecological features, alternative water sources, and waste management. That gets you 60 points. You might be interested to observe that none of these criteria even involve solar panels yet. Neither is the criterion for certified green buildings included. These are purely location, project design, and project management related merits. But again, it must all start with an unyielding desire, very strong teamwork, and a network of industrial partners that are equally committed to achieving said accreditation. And of course, your project and its merits must meet the standards that are set forth by PhilGBC and its Bearded Districts program. Throughout the pilot project, PhilGBC, City Homes, and our fellow co-candidates work together closely and diligently to make it as simple as possible for other developers to be able to successfully enact measures for ecological sustainability, all while earning recognition from the local chapter of the World Green Building Council while they're at it. Our hope is that by having been part of this program, more developers and allied suppliers alike will join this call for more environmentally conscious projects, relevant and applied technologies, and improved products and services at economically viable prices for would-be property buyers and investors. It is the least we must do to slow down the effects of mass urbanization, and it is a non-negotiable duty we must carry out to preserve our planet for the next generations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wang. Our next presenter, um, let us welcome Ms. Castri Ms. Ms. Christina Samantha Pobre. She's the Sustainability Manager of Arthurland Corporation. Sam? Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for that introduction, um, Ms. Wang. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Sam Pobre. I am the Sustainability Manager in Arthurland. Um, I am actually the person who did um, Arthurland's um, Bird of Artistics project. Uh, in terms of implement, uh, identifying the strategies, um, planning it through the design, and looking out into the implementation, and making sure that um, while the project is in operation, um, all our promises will be seen today. Okay, so Sabina Park, Sabina Park, as we envision here in the, in the, the project, is a neighborhood development master plan to be an inspiring environment for a holistic living experience in the Philippines. Uh, next slide, please. So before I dive down into the project and to share with you how exactly we did, how we greened um, uh, Sabina Park, let me um, introduce who Arthaland is. Arthaland is a real estate developer in, in, here in the Philippines. We are the foremost green developer in the country. And we say this because 100% of our development portfolio is certified sustainable project. And this is a, um, a promise that we give in all, to all our stakeholders um, that all our projects will be responsibly designed, constructed, and operated. Um, and this is not just for a select few um, projects. This is no matter how small or how big it maybe a commercial development, even a residential project, or as big as a district project. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. 
So um, in sustainability, this is a very recent upgrade for Arthaland uh, because um, when we established, when the Poe and the Gonzalez family established Arthaland as um, Arthaland Corporation, uh, we started with just a promise of developing green, a certified sustainable, uh, certified green. But then in the recent years, um, we are very proud that in 2020, we are the very first real estate developer in Southeast Asia to join um, the net zero carbon buildings commitment under the World Green Building Council's um, framework. Um, so in sustainability for Arthaland, it's, um, there's two things that we want um, to, to, to meet. One is the net zero. It means that our developments will be sustainable and has an operational energy of zero carbon emissions. This is a very relevant to what we're experiencing um, and what the global movement is in terms of um, our ambitious, uh, our ambition to actually drastically reduce our carbon emissions and actually make it as zero. And number two, a, an equally important aspect in sustainability is the health and wellness. Um, green and health and wellness will always go hand in hand. There is no one priority over the other. So. The second point of sustainability in our land is the health and wellness and its impact to the people that we cater to in our developments. Next slide, please. So in Sabina Park, these two things will be met. Um, Sabina Park um, is a is a bird district project. It's under the pilot program. Uh, it, it was able to achieve design five star in 2002. Uh, in 2022, sorry. Um, but then actually, um, going back to the history of, of Sabina Park, um, it also pursued a lead for neighborhood development. Um, in 2020, we were able to achieve a platinum rating. Um, um, we pursued the lead certification earlier than Berde only because that Berde wasn't available at that at that time. And we were, uh, we were actually bugging, um, Phil GDC to actually release the Berde for districts because we really wanted to um, do a local certification for the, for the districts. Um, but to share you, um, uh, Sabina Park is the only project here in the Philippines to have achieved both the highest for Birde and Bleed in terms of a neighborhood scale development. And um, just to share with, with everyone, we actually started uh, with targeting only um, lead certified because it was uh, um, Savina Park is our first venture in the horizontal development. Um, and then when we were working through our design, we figured that oh the the rating systems um, are quite um, logical, practical, and very um, very much what the community would need. So we when we were looking at it, we were falling under the lead gold already. And then when we studied what else can we do, we were falling a few points short to lead platinum. And then when we said, and that, that few points short wasn't actually a joke. Uh, we really need to review things. We needed to um, consider our finances, of course, and the, the overall impact of what we were going to get intangible, intangible things for the project. And then um, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, the president of Arthaland, um, said, yes, we are going to pursue lead platinum for that if that is the only thing that um, with this, um, a few more points in, um, for us to achieve that. Um, and then when we pursued um, Birdie for Districts, we found out that, okay, we were already at lead platinum. Of course, as a, if we're going to pursue a local rating system, we cannot be falling short anywhere uh, we need to pursue per the five stars for this. So that was our story um, in terms of the certification and rating system. Um, it's So uh, what I wanted to say is that it wasn't, um, when we planned it, it wasn't as if we, we were saying that, okay, we're going to go for lead platinum or per the five stars. It was a journey. And that is also our advice to our colleagues as developers um, to, that it doesn't happen instantaneous. It has to go through a management um, buy-ins and the uh, and the people who works on it, and of course um, the financing part of our projects. Next slide, please. Okay, so Savina Park. Savina Park is um, located in 
Cecilia Araneta, Parkway Binian, Laguna, Philippines. Um, Rain, could you please help me in terms of pointing? So there are two access, uh, there are key access points in Savina Park. Savina Park is uh, the one that is popped out with Savina Park. Rain, if you could help me with the mouse. All right. Okay. And then, so there are two, um, key access points. Um, it's, uh, uh, it can be accessible via the Santa Rosa exit here around the XS Lex, um, road. Um, this is 20 minutes via the Santa Rosa exit and Eaton exit, but the newly constructed, um, um, road here, a uh, newly opened road is the one from Calax via New Valley Road. This is only 7.8 kilometers, which is about 15 minutes. So we're saving five minutes away from that. Um, so in terms of location, that's where it is. Uh, Rain, next slide, please. Okay, so um, a key influencing factor for us in terms of our development is our is the existing neighborhood. So we've observed that there are actually six educational institutions around the, the project. And the nearest and actually adjacent to us is actually La Salle, uh, La Salle Laguna Campus there and Bicod Academy about one kilometer away from us. So with this, we, we figure that the users um, the need of the community, uh, sorry, the population of the current community is really for students or families with kids. So this is one big factor in terms of our plan. Next slide, please. All right. So Sabina Park, uh, yeah, it's a uh, eight hectare mixed use development. This is actually master plan. I think, I think you need to go with um, my flow there. Okay. Um, it's master planned by Sasaki Associates Inc. Um, please click. Green. Okay, so this is the boundary for um, for our bridge for the six. Next. The very first, this one, the very first uh, development in this eight hectare is Quartered Hall. This is a student teacher dormitory because this is what um at the time is actually until now is needed by, by La Salle and Beacon and the other um, educational institutions. So we needed to create this, uh, build this student teacher dormitory. And this was part of our very early developments in the project. Next. The next and current phase that we're developing is Sabina Park Villas. This is a 108 uh, single attached um, villa units also designed by, uh, designed by Leandro V. Luxine Partners. Um, okay, next. All right. This one, the one, uh, on the upper part, the, the highlighted in green is Una Apartments. Um, this is a five tower residential condominium. Um, yeah, in, in, in this, in this development. Next. And then the last phase of our development, this is still for the future development, is uh, the commercial development on the far right. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so given the profile of the project, we are building 60% residential component because um, we imagine that kids would be, uh, students would be moving into Sabina Park or, or in this general area in order to, because it's nearer to the schools. So, so 60% residential component. Uh, next slide, please. And 40% commercial and retail component. The, this retail and commercial component are envisioned to, um, complement the residential areas wherein um, this should serve the basic needs of this community so that we don't have to go outside uh, the community and ride their their car. It has to be walkable. In, uh, so 100% of Sabina Park will be walkable. Okay. 
ka right. So in terms of um what we envision in terms of concept for Sabina Park, there are three things that we want to to achieve in the planning. One, of course, is the the net zero. When we say net zero, then the impact of this project has to be able to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions of the development. Okay. Next. Next is wellness. Um, we want to provide a community that is conducive for healthier living. And the, the actually the, the environment and how we design things or, or how we plan our infrastructure will be able to impact the health and wellness of the stakeholders or the residents and tenants of the community. Next. And lastly is economics. Um, we envision that this project is affordable. It will be an inclusive community through affordability. Um, we know that um, in all history of Arthelan, we've catered to this uh, niche in the market, and there's a misconception of what sustainability is. Um, that sustainability is only for those who have um, um, in the higher um, market segment. But actually, here in Sabina, what we want to prove um, is that sustainability can be in any market. Um, and this is our first foyer to the mid-market, actually. And this is why um, affordability is one of the key things that we want to achieve in this project. Okay. So what are the things inside Savina Park? Um, so we planned our um, our eight hectare development that is 60 percent to have 60 percent green and open spaces and when we say 60 percent this does not include the roads um, the 60 percent is solely for pedestrians and usable areas for for the community to do activities together as well as um vegetation so that's the 60 percent and with a lot of um these spaces, we are we naturally create a lot of um, pedestrian pathways. And in order for this this um, area to work, um, we we placed a um, ninety five percent of the pedestrian pathway. We we make sure that they are covered, so that even if it's raining or even if it's a super sunny day, then the pedestrian walkway sh should be able uh, should be a comfortable living experience or yeah for for the community. Um, how we did this, we ensured that every block inside Sabina Park has a courtyard. Um, so um, if you would see, this is actually the, the photo here on the right is uh, is actually a perspective of this of the Sabina Park Villas. You would see that this um, big windows or sliding doors on the right is a direct access from the villas. So that um, because we envision again, this this community is for students uh, and for families with kids. So what we want to happen is that kids would be able to go out of their house, play on the street or play on on the areas. Um, so so each villas would be would just have to open their 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 doors and then there is this safe area for them to play. Uh, okay. So the next um, feature is. We wanted the, the area to be, that's okay, Anna, rain, just click. Uh, the area to be walkable and bicycle friendly. Uh, I've already explained many things about the walkability. While well, the bicycle community, we've also planned, uh, we made sure that the our infrastructure are able to um, accommodate bicycle lanes. Um, we also, um, it, not only in the infrastructure, but also in the policies. So in order for a bicycle friendly neighborhood to work, then we needed to control the speed of the of the cars so the, so that it would be safe because we um this is a very small development so we don't we don't have enough space for for barriers for the bicycle to make sure that it's safe so what we're doing is we're um we're doing it via the policy side which is limiting the speed limit of the cars so that they won't have that, so that it wouldn't be uh, dangerous for the bicycles all right Uh, next slide, please. There. Okay. So we have a lot of opportunities. As we said that we are going to have 60% open and vegetated space. So we took this opportunity not to only simply plant, um, but we want it as an avenue to, um, as a home to endemic and threatened species. 
Um, again, the, the community would cater to students and kids. So we wanted to show this um, community that we have this endangered species and we want to help them grow. Um, it's also um, it's also an educational, um, a little bit of education for them because they might not be able to see these types of species anymore because they, these are threatened species. So it's like a dual purpose for us. And of course, because it promotes um, a lot of uh, local biodiversity. Next. Also, again, um, revolving from our, this is all centered in the 60% open and green spaces. Because we have a lot of, of, of open and green spaces, we are able to space out our um, our structures inside Savino Park with a good step box from each building. Um, in this way, we are able to uh, support the maxim uh, maximizing natural ventilation and daylighting for each of the houses. Um, this is actually a, there, there's a lot of benefits for this because one, um, there are a lot of studies saying that if the residents are able to have access to green spaces and also the natural kahit sky, um, uh, this would impact their health and wellness, uh, the overall mental well-being of a person. Um, the same way, um, the a lot of green spaces would be able to support our um, greenhouse gas emissions reduction uh, target because well having uh, having the the plants there would reduce uh, would reduce our resource uh, would reduce our resource demand okay and of course having these two things um having the not uh sorry uh operating with maximize uh, natural daylight and and natural ventilation would allow the residents to be independent from electricity Next here is the renewable energy system. We, um, the villa, the, uh, there is only one unit, which is the villa 182, uh, will have its own solar panels on the rooftop. This is, um, when the, when buyers would buy the house and lot, this will be already installed. But, um, for the two other villas, uh, that is, um, available here, this is, uh, their roofs are ready to receive with renewable energy. Okay, this is to cater to different markets, those who can afford to have the top up for the renewable energy and for those who doesn't have the capital expense at the moment, but then um, would want a solar panel in the future. So th those are the two options. All right, next. All right, so of course, if you have a lot of um, strategies for energy, we also have strategies for water. Um, Sabina Park is designed to have a rainwater recycling system. This is, of course, to aggregate the potable water demand of the community. Why is it important for us to have this? It, we are building Sabina Park with 60% open and vegetated space, right? So there would, we would require a lot of water, um, a, a lot of water in order to make sure that the plants and trees are alive. So what? There, it's also a good opportunity for us to reduce our demand and reduce the our utility bills because of um, rainwater recycling. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. All right. More into the health and wellness. This is more in the policy side. Of course, there is um there is the design side because the spaces are there. Um, Savino Park. We have a we have a partnership with the medical city. This is to provide primary care services for the community inside Sabina Park. This um, we are our partnership would secure at least one doctor and two nurses available in the site. Um, there will be free consultations with them and at least one nurse to be available twenty four seven in the area. Again, because the community caters to students and kids it's very important for us to make sure that the health and wellness side is also um something that we can be we are able to respond very immediately when something happens okay next slide please all right 
So before even our kids or our community, um, before they even get any sickness, we have to prevent that sickness. And how do we do that? One is their nutrition. So it's very important. And this is also a commitment of Parasa Land throughout um, very recently made, um, also in 2020, I believe. Um, we are making sure that cottage gardens by Arthur Land will be available in every property, regardless if it's residential, mixed with development like this, or even in commercial projects. So that um, cottage garden is an edible garden. Um, so this is to promote healthy eating. And we want this healthy food to be very accessible to our stakeholders. Okay. Um, supporting supporting a healthy nutrition, we want uh, physical activeness or physical fitness. We are providing indoor and outdoor areas for physical activities, and you would see that um, in in the amenity amenity areas in the Una Apartments area, as well as the courtyard halls where it uh, sorry the courtyard areas in Savina Park Villas where they can uh, jog around the area. Okay. affordability so we are designing the project to have an affordable unit cost so this is how we are we are trying to make it a uh, work in terms of um the mid market segment uh we make sure that the cuts are enough just just enough for people so that we don't compromise all the sustainability features that we have in each of the building and to support that the the affordability of the units, we also created a program that would have a favorable financing scheme. So this is more about financials. Therefore, the future owners or potential buyers of the units inside us, own apartments and our um, sustainable projects inside Savina Park. Next. Ah, right. Okay. So, um. In terms of sustainability, we are not only um, we are not stopping at um, getting certification for the for the community as uh, for the districts, but also what we want to promise the public here is that every project inside Savino Park to be developed by Arthaland will be certified sustainable. So it doesn't stop from the community, but also in the building. So the usual certifications that our talent pursue is for the certification, lead certification, edge, and well certification. Next. So how what exactly is our impact and how are we meeting the three things that we are um, promising the public? So net zero. Um we are going to meet this via getting a certification again in each and every building to be developed by our talent inside the Savina Park. We are targeting at least 20 to 40 percent energy savings compared to conventional design here in the Philippines. The same way with water, 20 to 40 percent water savings, and that of course that the whole of Savina Park will be 100 percent renewable energy by 2030. In terms of wellness, we are not only providing access to primary health care, but we also establish the preventive me measures for health and well-being. That is one by providing good nutrition through healthy eating, uh, physical fitness through an active lifestyle. We have bicycle areas there. We have we encourage you to walk, um, and we have a lot of indoor and outdoor activities, um, physical activities. And lastly, is the uh, the conditions in the overall feel of of the area is conducive for better mental well-being because. Physical wellness, uh, wellness is not limited to our physical sense, but also on how well our mind is. Okay. And third is affordability. So this is the, again, the first time that Arthanad is entering the meat market, wherein we want to show the public, demonstrate that sustainability is available for all market segments. And how, so not only will the capital expense be affordable, and also the financing terms for, for the project. Um, we are also promising a, um, the affordability would also be able to, we will also get the affordability through the yield of operational efficiency, saving from the uh, of operational efficiency. Because again, we are saving 20 to 40% in energy and water 
So families inside Sabina Park should be able to allocate their monthly budget more for themselves than just paying their monthly expenses or utility expenses. And lastly, there are, we will also be able to yield benefits from the health and wellness features of the project. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how Sedina Park is envisioned to be a neighborhood development, master plan to be an inspiring environment for a holistic living experience and development. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Pobre. For our next presentation, let us welcome Mr. Don Don Marie Ubaldo, First Vice President, Pelenvest Alapang. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to be part of this morning's webinar. I hope everyone is healthy and comfortable wherever you are. Philanva City was born more than 20 years ago. Throughout the planning and ongoing construction of the city, the guiding principle has always been a deep and profound respect and appreciation for the nature and the community it serves. Pursuing lead and birthday exemplifies PhilInvest's commitment to green and sustainable practices. It is the culmination of this promise to stakeholders and the community at large. It is a natural progression in a journey towards building a township that navigates the delicate balance between ecology and business. Participating in the Birthday Districts program was a very easy and natural decision to make since sustainability is part of our township's DNA. We hope that our participation in the pilot program allows us to positively influence other developers and help shape the rating tool for the benefit of everyone. Philinvesity is a premier and future ready CBD designed to accelerate growth for businesses of all scales. It is a complete township that offers a vibrant live, work, play, and thrive lifestyle for its citizens. Philanthropy City is the gateway to the growing Calabar zone. It benefits from five major roads leading directly to it, which in turn offers locators excellent accessibility. And with the government's pri priority infrastructure projects like the Skyway Stage 3, travel time to and from here has indeed become shorter. Aside from the multiple access points, we are home to South Station, one of the South Metro Manila's largest multimodal transport hubs connecting us to the rest of the metro in southern, southern Luzon through public transportation. In-city travel, on the other hand, is covered by our green e-vehicle public transport system, the PhilInvest 360 Ecoloop. This inclusive mobility plus the availability of residential options and pleasant nature-inspired environs make PhilInvest City the preferred address here in Metro South. How are, how are we sustainable? As I mentioned earlier, PhilInvest has been in existence for close to three decades already. I'm very proud to say that even before the market recognition of sustainability's importance and before green building certification tools were institutionalized, PhilInvest City was already designed to be people-centric and nature-inspired. Our company has always believed that looking out for the environment is our investment in our future especially since it impacts our citizens' well-being and everyone's bottom line. Our planning philosophy for Philanthropy City focused on nature-inspired and inclusive mobility. The township was designed to be self-contained with several complete mixed-use districts and intrinsically pedestrian-friendly. All your needs are within easy reach and getting to them is a pleasant walk or bike ride away. This allows our citizens to rely on to rely less on vehicles for in-city travel. We believe that physical and visual access to greens and open spaces result to improve health through fresh air, exercise, and recreation. This is why at the onset of planning for Philadelphia City, we sought to integrate the area's natural environs in the city's design. Respecting the natural terrain allowed us to do city development that's less invasive 
but more importantly, it created memorable features that further defined Philanva City's character as a garden city. We've created a network of interconnected parks and open spaces, which include the Festival Mall, River Park, and Water Garden. These are scenic spots that take advantage of how we built the mall around the Alabang Kupang River. This park system includes our planned Creekside Park. It's a 2.2 kilometer riverside pedestrian and bike path, which starts from the northeast down to the southwest portion of the property. Our central park is envisioned to be one of the major public event spaces within Philanva City in the future. We opened the first phase earlier this year, and we are looking forward to opening the second phase in time for the holidays later, later this year. Another part of our strategy is revisiting our master plan to add more open spaces. In recent years, we actually reduced the width of one of our city's major roads to create the Spectrum Linear Park. It's a three-line park dotted with art installations. Philanva City's flora and fauna continues to flourish and live as the city conserves and protects its natural habitat, free from any disturbance. In total, there are 67 exotic, 51 native but endemic, and two Philippine endemic plant species found. Philanva City also serves as breeding ground to some birds while others visit the city regularly. Moving on on the technology side, once we grew the city to a significant scale, we started embarking on relevant sustainability solutions to provide a better quality of living, efficiencies, and cost savings. Five years ago, we partnered with NG to build the country's largest district cooling system in Northgate Cyber Zone, which is the third largest IT park in Metro Manila. District cooling is basically a, a more efficient and sustainable way of providing building air conditioning. As a result, our offices connected to the DCS have been enjoying as much as 40% energy cost savings. Philinvest NG Renewable Energy Enterprise Inc. or FREE uh, is a joint venture company of FDC Utilities, the power utility arm of uh, Philinvest Development Corporation and NG Services Philippines kicked off its first project, a two megawatt solar rooftop solution at Philinvest Land Inc.'s Festival Mall in Alabang. The intelligence system will supply about 28% of the mall's peak demand and save close to 41,000 tons of carbon dioxide. This is equivalent to removing approximately 9,000 cars off the roads in Metro Manila. We have a long-term commitment to the continued success of Phil and the City, and we will definitely continue to introduce new and smart technology that supports sustainability and improve quality of living. We are quite proud to say that with all this, Philanva City is undisputedly the country's garden city. The rich feature set of Philanva City, which includes the refreshing environment coming from our lush open spaces, the shaded path walks, our technology investments, and even our bike trail, make it stand out relative to other developments. Our participation in the Bird and Districts program also allowed us to affirm that Philanva City is indeed an excellent example of active design at work. Philanva City's pedestrian-friendly design provides proactive venues for walking, jogging, and cycling, which serves as modes of sustainable user mobility that promote fitness and physical well-being. The streets are built for people regardless of whether or not they use cars or, or alternative means of transport, the main pedestrian connectivity is set through the green open spaces. Our bike mobility network is an important component of our streetscape that can help encourage cycling as a mode of transportation and recreation. It promotes health, pollution reduction, and it reduces traffic congestion. Aside from having bike lanes, we are the only CBD in the country with its own 9-kilometer mountain bike trail. The jogging network is programmed to run along minor thoroughfares and to pass through dedicated open spaces with adequate wayfinding signages. Our public art installations <coughs> and landscape features make for a more vibrant pedestrian experience. 
These are designed to engage the passers-by and even double sometimes the seating areas. Beyond having a master plan that promotes active design, Philinvest nurtures the well-being not just of its own citizens but also nearby communities by establishing and hosting scheduled events such as fun runs, uh, bike races, Zumba, or yoga sessions, and the like. We are very proud of the the city, and we are confident that our city's inherent design anchored on sustainable development will continue to help our locators and our community. We believe that a sustainable address is the first step to building an environmentally conscious home or office, and we are happy to be part of the sustainable sustainability journey of our esteemed Verde and LEED certified locators. Philanthropy City is our proof of concept that green township development leads to both excellent investment appreciation and thriving communities. And we are eagerly replicating the smart and sustainable practices that make Philanthropy City a highly recognized green city in our other townships as well. With this, we will continue to leverage on global and local rating systems as Philanthropy takes the lead in creating greener and more livable cities in the country. Again, it is our privilege to have been part of the Verde Districts program. We hope that our story inspires other townships and districts into championing sustainability, providing tangible benefit not only to stakeholders, but also to the environment. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Obaldo. May I now invite uh, to turn on your cameras and join us for the open forum for this uh, episode. As mentioned earlier uh, to our participants, you may send your, uh, your questions uh, for our speakers using the question box. Okay. Okay. Morning, Sir Don, Sir John. Um, morning. Morning. So, just to uh, hi Sam. Good morning. So we'll just wait for um, Sir Rafa to join. Uh, join us while waiting for while waiting for let's uh Sigura, let's start with the uh open forum we have here questions um for, for our uh speakers so we'll start with um we'll start with mr john sir um for for your homes, Nai, uh, how will you ensure that your unit owners and tenants continue to the implementation and properly use green the green building features uh, within your green community? Well, there's a, a lot of education that's needed. Uh, when we turn over the properties, we'll have to uh, provide full orientation to them. Uh, with 3,300 units, uh, we'll be there for a while. Uh, we'll have we have our estate admin department and they'll uh, be uh, uh, on site uh, to uh, to do their rounds uh, handle various aspects of uh, community uh, uh, life and uh, you know, a lot of reminders have to be done uh, obviously uh, so we'll be on site for at least a couple of years before we turn over the uh, subdivision to the association so hopefully that amount of time and consistent reminders uh, will, uh, will will play their part uh, in uh, ensuring uh, compliance and <laughs> cooperation <laughs> because there's 3,000 families and uh, that's a lot of personality so uh, it, it, it comes with practice yeah. thank you sir john for that question uh, answer 
Um, this one. For, for Sivina Park, yeah, Sam, uh, I have the same question since uh, you are both, uh, you have both residential areas that you have installed these um, uh, green building features. So how will you uh, ensure that your unit owners uh, and tenants continue the implementation and proper use of green features within your uh, very big green district? Okay. Actually, let me, um, because we're all, it, the, the question is more focused on the operations, right? But actually, let me bring you back to uh, district's um, point of view. So the common product, uh, commonly what we do is we build the infrastructure and then we have the, uh, the whole land of as a the district. But then the question is, will the lot owner build a project uh, that is sustainable also? So what we do in Arthalan to eliminate that risk is that we already build the buildings. That's why um, um, actually particularly for Savina Park, this is a campus project wherein we develop the infrastructure as well as develop the, the buildings inside. Um, this way, we are able to influence the design of the building. Um, actually, we, we are able to communicate the land of design so, uh, as well as the building design. That's why we are able to create the uh, maximizing the uh, maximizing daylighting as well as ventilation. Um, and also in this way, we are able to put in the sustainability features inside the, the building in itself. So that when the unit owners come in and they, um, they operate their home or their, their, um, commercial spaces, everything is already there, is already there. They don't have to lift any finger. What they um uh, we've already installed the, the low flow plumbing fixture, so so they don't have to do anything. So um, basically, the sustainable uh, sustainability features are there. What they shouldn't do is to replace those fixtures, though. And for us to ensure that they don't, um, the business model of Artha Land we created it in such a way that we, we what we usually do is we build and then we sell this these properties, right? So, but then. Um, in order for us to make sure that all our promises during the design and during the conceptual stage of the project are met during operations, we're promising 40% energy savings, 40% uh, water savings. And what we want is for our buyers to actually experience that. So we are, um, we make sure that our property arm, Amera Prestige Property Solutions, are in all our developments to ensure that the credibility of, um, of the sustainable features are well maintained and functions and that the, each building will be able to perform according to what we promise. So that is actually the key for us. As well as actually what Sir, Sir Spike said, um, that uh, education is actually also key, very much. May, may, I, may I add, um, uh, part, part of, I think, uh, uh, what, what may help uh, in, in motivating uh, Samantha, I think you might agree with this. What's in it for the buyer, right? You wanna you wanna get forty percent or 30 percent power savings, water savings. That's 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 benefit to the buyer for their monthly expenses. Uh, that should help with motivating them to uh, to, to 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 certain actions. Uh, for example, uh, rainwater harvest tanks and solar panels. They need maintenance. You do have to maintain them, so uh, we'll provide a contact directory for for our fellow suppliers and say, okay, please call these guys, do your uh, call them and they'll come in. Let the experts handle it. It's just a small fee for maintenance, but you get to keep on your your savings. But small price to pay. <clears throat> Thank you, John. Thank you, Sam. So. Uh, we have a question here for uh, Rafa. Um, as a green industrial estate, how did you engage your locators to incorporate sustainability in their processes and um, what insights did you receive from them in improving their sustainability performance? Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. Um, be, being an industrial estate where the majority of our uh, locators happen to be foreign companies who, who manufacture here and export. These are very sophisticated companies themselves. And actually what we've found is that they, prior to even deciding on 
coming to to the Philippines or to our um, industrial estate, they have their own questions about our sustainability programs. And I think um, in in our presentation earlier, we covered how sustainability is woven into uh, the bulk of our uh, of everything we do, including the infrastructure. So they're able to to know that immediately they'll tap into infrastructure that is taking sustainability into account. In addition to that, we engage them further through our DOR, where we have uh, guidelines that that require sustainability practices. And um, I, you know, a, a thing that I think is proof of of them, uh, you know, this being very important to them is. For example, within the state, the large majority of our locators uh, utilize rooftop solar, um, which generate all in all about 17 megawatts of solar energy. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, buildings within our state from locators that are LEED certified and also EDGE certified. So, um, you know, th this is really a very important thing to to not just our, our foreign locators, but even the, the, the large um, domestic enterprises who, who choose to, to locate in a place where sustainability is at the forefront of the development. Thank you, Rafa, for that insight that your, your uh, uh, locators actually look forward to having sustainable uh, initiatives within your district project. Um, we have also here a question for. Um, Sir Don for Philinvestity. So as a commercial district, how has the market received your sustainability efforts uh, for Philinvestity? Morning again. Um, thank you for that question. Um, for Philinvestity, part of our first sustainable design is having abundant uh, open spaces and interconnected parks. So we opened the first phase of our Central Park earlier this year, and we saw that that, that, that the people came. We, they really came, and it seems that they were actually looking for open spaces, having been locked down for two years already. So, in fact, neighbor, uh, our neighbors, uh, Paranaque, Las Piñas, and Laguna, people come from, from these places to enjoy the Central Park here in, in Philanda City. So, Adding on to what Rafa mentioned earlier, we've seen uh, our locators uh, applying for LEED and BIRD certifications as well. So we're seeing validation of sustainability as not just being must uh, nice to have, but really must haves right now. Especially, uh, it it was brought about by the needs of the of, of the pandemic. So so we're enjoying um, people uh, going here, um, enjoying the open spaces and. We're really, we're really pushing the envelope uh, towards sustainability in the coming years. So uh, we have here a question for all uh, the speakers. Um, for all your uh, district projects, what's in store for the future when it comes to sustainability for all your district projects, whether it may be residential, commercial district, industrial district, or mixed-use uh, district who would want to come first? Maybe Rafa, you may want to uh, answer the question first. Sure. Um, so I think for, for us, and I, and I imagine having uh, listened to the rest of the presentations, this is really um, at the forefront of what everyone's thinking. And, and Don Don mentioned it, right? That it's not a nice to have anymore. It's it's a it's must, a must have, have already, right? yeah. And and I think for for many of us, whether we're developing industrial, commercial, or residential, our users um, are demanding it. And and from our perspective, where industry is the catalyst and the and the anchor of our development, um, we're competing not just with other developments in the country. We're competing with developments in Vietnam, in Malaysia, and Thailand, all across the region, right? And when you look to those places, you see that they're in many ways uh, further advanced to, to where the Philippines is. But it's not to say that we, we can't cut, catch up, but we, we have to really um, accelerate um, everything that we do when it comes to sustainability. So from, from our perspective, we will continue to, to do it, not just with, with industry, which as I mentioned, is a catalyst, but the, the complementary components um, that we are um, adding as well. So for example, within our central business district, um, our buildings were now undergoing the Verde accreditation. 
and we will continue to, to do that uh, as we roll out new projects within the state. Uh, yes, sir, I go ahead. I can go yeah. next. Um, uh, from, from our perspective uh, for PhilInvest, I mentioned earlier that uh, sustainability is a major uh, element in our township's DNA. So what the market can expect, we will continue to push the envelope further. So we'll be investing in relevant technology. We'll all, we'll, we'll all be on the lookout for best practices from other countries, and we bring it here. So what what I like about the, the workflow here in, in Phil Invest in our townships is Everything is uh, people-centric. We, we go down to the details in, on the ground and we, we ensure that everything is pleasant. So th that's what we'll be expecting for, for the townships of Phil Invest in the coming years. Thank you, Sir Don. Uh, yes, Sir John. I think ladies first. Okay, Sam. <laughs> Actually, um, my colleagues here, already mentioned a lot of things now. But particular, on top of that, um, particularly for Earthland, um, next for us is a net zero township township development. So this is something that we're really looking into. And because yeah. because in Earthland, we are really driving net zero in terms of all our properties. And the same way with health and wellness. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Yes, Sir John. Okay. All right. Well, um, we, we, we are... Uh, Miss Miss Rowena, you were at the uh, the launch. Uh, the, the model house cluster is there, so we're just getting started. We haven't even really started to feel the uh, the benefits uh, or or uh, be uh, uh, in, uh, informed by our homeowners uh, how happy they are with their solar and their rainwater. We, we're we're just at the beginning. Uh, but one thing that I I think is uh, very important uh, for the next step for city homes. Um, we've been doing horizontal developments, mass housing, low cost subdivisions for so many years. Uh, a very big problem is uh, uh, waste management, like really serious waste management. Uh, we're talking about two majors. One is the household refuse. So that's your food leftovers, chicken bones, fish bones, that sort of thing. Uh, and the other one is plastic. Plastic is a genuine killer. Um, we've been looking around the internet, a uh, couple of suppliers from China, that sort of thing. But if there is a way for our next project to uh, allocate space uh, where when we can uh, harvest all this uh, all, all this household level waste, which is so, I mean, it's so much around the country. So many developers like us, horizontal developers, uh, and all those residents with their household and plastic waste. If, if, if there's ways that we can find or we can partner up with expert companies to uh, to recycle, to get rid of uh, these household and plastic wastes and also to maybe convert them to material or to energy uh, and prevent all of that from going into landfills, we can start fighting against and slowing down the effects of, of, of all of our human waste uh, on our country. We, we have such a beautiful country. We owe it to our next generation to, 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 to research and, and to take action on this because uh, if we don't, uh, it ends up in our rivers, it ends up in our seafood, and uh, we might, it might come back to us when we uh, uh, buy a, uh, Bacalao loins uh, from uh, SNR. Uh, so uh, definitely that's one of those things that we want to look at for our next project. But uh, we enjoy all developers uh, of all different types. Real estate is such a it's such a big spectrum. Um, we're the little guy. We're, we're the low cost guy. Uh, and there are many in our league. So hopefully uh, we, we get more people to join us and uh, to, to educate our countrymen in doing so, uh, to, to live responsibly and sustainably. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. So um, in the interest of time, um, we'll just have um, uh, 
further questions from our participants, we'll just send them to our speakers. Uh, thank you once again to Mr. Rafael Fernandez de Mesa, Mr. John Wang, Mr. Uh, Ms. Samantha Pobre, uh, and Mr. Don Don Obaldo for sharing your insights and experience on having your district projects be certified. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you, for GBC. Thanks. Thank you. So for our um, next um, presentation, we'll have uh, our Berde certified uh, projects uh, present. We'll have uh, Mr. Francis Erico Rodriguez, uh, Senior Technical Manager of Cebu Land Masters. Sir Francis. Good morning, everyone. Yes, uh, thank you for that introduction. So, uh, so here in this uh, forum, I'd like to discuss our journey and and how we obtained and how we went through the process of certifying our project, the Latitude Corporate Center. But first and foremost, we go to the details of the project. Next slide. So to give you an introduction of Cebu Land Masters, so we are a locally, uh, we are a homegrown uh, uh, company. Uh, we started in Cebu with a vision to provide better homes for the average Filipino worker. So we are predominantly uh, uh, visible in the Vismin area with 70 projects with different stages of developments in 15 key cities in the region. So our real estate experience will be spent on continuously being in the masters for one thing, service. So the project Latitude Corporate Center is Cebu Land Masters' second corporate office. Can we go to the next slide? So the location is very ideal. It's located in uh, Cebu Business Park, which is the central business district in Cebu City. So it's the preferred and ideal address for uh, business and leisure lifestyle. So the total lot area is about 2,939. The gross floor area of 35,747. So here we cater to three different uh, office types. So we have the executive offices, the small, uh, the, the, the minority portion of our property. So the enterprise floors, the medium, and the BPO spaces, which is a larger cut of uh, floor uh, area. And then below is the ground floor and the second uh, retail area for our building. Next slide. So let's go to our energy efficiency conservation. So Latitude Corporate Center was able to uh, achieve a 31.88% based on our design. So we have operable windows for the regularly occupied spaces. We have high performance building envelope and uses energy efficient lighting fixtures and air conditioning systems. Another, another milestone that we were able to achieve is that we have able to garner one star advanced net zero rating certification. It's the first, uh, it's the first and then a pilot implementation of the rating tool. So the project's energy performance is 45.79% based on the first year of operations. Water efficiency and conservation. So potable water consumption reduction is at 51.88%. That's more than half of our demand. 
sa the low flow plumbing fixtures and rain, rainwater collection system is very vital and plays a vital or a key role in our design component. Wherein not only we are providing LGO mandated uh, design efficiencies, but we also look into how we're able to inculcate this uh, as a standard procedure to all our developments. Next. So the use of land and ecology. So it's having a having a, a lesser footprint in the area. So we're tasked to really account and do inventory of the natural ecology. So having luscious uh, vegetation in the area, we found that there's really a need for us to protect and preserve existing trees, especially the ones that you see here. This is a big acacia tree. And then what we did was we built around the tree and being able to preserve 30% of the vegetated open space and landscaping on the ground floor. Now, if you observe, if you've been to Cebu City, most approach or design approach of locators for maximum efficiency is that they were able to like provide a very straightforward design approach, meaning you get setbacks, and then uh, do do your billing line across uh, along that setback. What we did here is that apart from the setbacks being as a mandate from us, is that we're able to put a park in that area. Meaning, after we secured permits from the Cebu Business District or Cebu Business Park, Cebu Business Park uh, made Cebu, uh, cor our Latitude Corporate Center, a model, a model for other locators to follow and to be able to, to it's like uh, they're, they're presenting our design case for future locators so that they would allow and follow uh, this approach from, from our team. So it's quite uh, flattering when we hear uh, officials from Ayala Land taking notice to our approach that Cebu Land Masters and the corporate, uh, the, this Latitude Corporate Center was able to present a unique feature in its, in its, uh, in its own project no? that we're able to carve out a, a good uh, balance between development and open space. Next slide. So green materials. So building materials with post-consumer recycled content with low VOC amount of 32% of the total material cost. So 30% of the total cost of materials is locally manufactured within the 35 kilometer of the project site. Next. So indoor environment quality. So 100% of the regular, regularly occupied space have access to daylight and outdoor views. 90% so of the regularly occupied space have provisions for natural ventilation. Designed with entry mats in public entrances and 85% of low VOC indoor materials. So the challenges uh, encountered during the bird certification. So there, uh, what you see here is that uh, apart from the challenge that we've encountered, there's also strategies that we adhered or we followed. So the challenge is that the procurement of records. So first thing you, you when you undergo a process is that you look into your records, you look into the data and paperwork that you, you have. So the strategy is the adherence to the specified materials during stage one. When we did the certification process, our Latitude Corporate Center has uh, uh, a long way in its uh, construction stage. 
meaning we had to uh, look into uh, the the early stages and uh, the paperwork and documentation uh, from the very start. So the complete records of all monitoring, photo documentation, procurement records provided by project engineers. So we also utilized local materials within close proximity to the project. Another challenge is the landscaping and open space. The use of native plant species for the landscaping is one strategy. So protection of the existing acacia tree within the project site and along the site perimeter. The acacia tree is one of the key features of the project. Maximizing available open space and use of open grid pavers. So advancing net zero Philippine certification. LCC was not planned to undergo the advanced net zero rating, which has a higher energy re reduction targets compared to what is, was initially designed. Through the use of energy reduction strategies, LCC was able to achieve one star certification. The next. So in conclusion, so the full participation of the project team headed by the project owner was really vital to the success of the corporate center to, to earn the five star, the coveted five star, a world-class practice. So the appreciation of the birthday process from kickoff meeting to submission of documents up to the on-site assessment also played a vital role meaning the process really takes us to the right path of uh, of really ensuring that everything is accounted for transparency towards teams and of or and of course the collaboration the collaboration between the the the, the project owner the, the contractor, the consultants, and the third party reviewer are all taken into account and assessed. So the transparency supports the target to achieve the highest rating of birds of bird F5 stars. So we are proud to say that the stage two construction garnered five star rating. The five star did not come easily to us, meaning there were periods of uh, periods of difficulties for us, wherein we question ourselves whether we settle for one star, two star, three star, or better yet, aim for the perfect world class practice. Fortunately, and I'm proud to say that Latitude Corporate Center was able to achieve a most the most difficult uh, and the most important milestone for Sibulan Masters, being the second corporate office of Sibulan Masters and the first Birde project we have. Five star rating is a way to go and a benchmark for our practice and for our for the teams to come to be able to recognize Birde as a as a as a unique tool as a great tool something that's not nice to have but it's something that you we all need to do and we all need to to take into uh, an opportunity for us to really put in uh, this important uh, certification so I'd, I'd like to thank my team on behalf of my team that uh, being an advocate of uh, green building practice, we adhere to uh, Phil GBC's policies and Verde's mantra to, to uplift the practice here in the Philippines, to go green. And I'd like to say, let's go Verde. That's it for me. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez, um, for that uh, presentation.
Uh, for our next presenter, um, we'll have Mr. Delphine Angelo Wenceslao, Chief Executive Officer of DM Wenceslao and Associates. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Bud Wenceslao, CEO of DM Wenceslao, the owner and master developer of Asiana City. You know, in today's session, you know, we've been asked by Berde to share our practices, our processes, and what we did uh, in order to get our five-star rating in our mixed-use development called Parkal. So I hope um, everybody will bear with us as we try to show you our learnings and what we've seen and what we've experienced during this entire process. So the flagship project of Asiana City in Paranaque is a mixed-use development comprising of nine four-story buildings called Parkal. The development stretches to 500 meters, occupying a total of area of 49,000 square meters. Parkal is actually a combination of two words, park or street or calle, which embodies our shared street concept. With a total area of 82,000 square meters, Parkal provides not only a retail spine of flagship stores and corporate offices, but also a public space for the community. And you know, I mean, given this time of what we're seeing during the pandemic, we wanted to make sure that we're able to provide a mixed use and public space that can be non-exclusive for all of the residents and visitors of Asiana. The project site has a diverse surrounding land use character comprising of commercial spaces, mixed use developments, residential condominiums, offices, buildings, hotels and casinos, public amenities, educational institutions, and government offices. Urban mobility influences our quality of life. The more infrastructure made for pedestrians, the easier it is for people to move around without cars and the healthier and more sustainable the city becomes. One of the major attributes of the development are the presence of major plazas which are connected within five minutes walking distance of green spaces. Parkal's concept is inspired by the old word plazas predating the introduction of cars. It revolves around creating quality public spaces inspired by plazas that were built in the Philippines during the Spanish era. The architectural expression for all of the buildings was developed based on a modernized deconstructed approach to the typology of Bahay in the Bato, a Philippine traditional architecture vernacular with Spanish, indigenous, and Chinese influences. That's why if you'll notice, Parkal, you know, we're actually playing with two, three types of material, steel, concrete, and wood traditional elements which you'd find in a traditional Baha'i Nabato. As you'll notice, we spend a lot of time and effort in making sure that our Khalsa aesthetic, aesthetic and architectural value stands out. But that being said, you know, we wanted to be sure that Parkal addresses the sustainable urbanization that we're experiencing today. Given that Parkal was actually pre-planned pre the pandemic, I think now more than ever, I think it's especially crucial to find these types of developments which add value to the community and take into account the wellness of its residents. That's why on last August 11, you know, we were very proud that we were actually able to get our first five-star rating in our first project, given that it's actually our first time to ever apply for a green rating in the Philippines. Why Berde? As part of the company's commitment to sustainability, Verde is one of the strategies we believe would help us achieve our goals. We want to articulate our cost features and corresponding benefits to end users. And when I say benefits, you know, we wanted to focus on three major features. Achieve resource efficiency in energy and water. Enhance social responsibility through public mobility. And comply with ecological responsibility through waste management. To put it candidly also, you know, we were able to see other types of certifications, but we felt that Berde was very attuned to the local conditions of the urban environment. Building something valuable is never a walk in the park, if you excuse the pun. Prior to achieving Parkal's five-star Berde Stage 1 certification, and considering it's our first time doing this, our team has faced challenges, you know, like strict documentation and cost implications, obviously, in adding um, these green features. In terms of documentation, while we have documented to the nth level on billings, progress, quality standards, commissioning, this was the first time that we also focused on sustainability aimed at to benefit the overall performance of the project and its effect on the community and the environment. 
In terms of cost implication, we saw adjustments during the planning and construction with regard to choice of materials, equipment, fixtures, and features. And with those challenges, we established a core technical group that concentrated on the environmental, social, and governance efforts of the company's sustainability efforts. We also assigned and trained technical employees to be barely accredited professionals. We collaborated with our architects, consultants, and designers for proper material specifications and process aligned to best standards of sustainability. We also needed and were required to appoint a commissioning agent in ensuring that the right and best use of the building's equipment as well as compliance with our proposed plans. As we move forward to stage two, our project team will strictly follow the requirements under these various certification programs that include, so for energy efficiency and conservation, per has taken a target energy consumption reduction of 35%. Parkal uses energy-efficient equipment such as energy submeters, air conditioning and lighting systems, and a building management system, or BMS, that help track and reduce energy consumption. For water consumption efficiency, Parkal used water-efficient fixtures with sensors such as irrigation and controllers, water submeters, and automated landscape irrigation and reused drain water for non-potable uses. For waste management, currently, Parkal construction waste diversion is at 7.70.63%. Parkal is compliant with the local government's waste management policies and makes use of MRFS or materials recovery facilities. The project team maintains a list of materials with low volatile organic compounds or VOCs. We also endeavored to find and use those materials with green certification, which currently account for 47.2% of the total material cost. For example, our famous ETFE canopy had a green certificate as low as a low VOC material, which we were able to use in terms of gardening credits. Note that 80.6% of local materials are produced within 100 kilometers from the project site. To manage the process, Parkal's green building professional was on board from the start and was responsible for overseeing the documentation process throughout the project duration. Parkal's project team also showed important highlights and strategies that have been included in the project design stakeholder consultation and design charrettes. With the assistance of specialized consultants, the project team determined which systems and models best suited the project in terms of efficiency. In reality, you know, it's pretty hard to get all of the points, so we need to focus on the project strengths and focus on which were also important to the concept. Parkal, is carefully designed to make sure that certain ecological features for landscape and flood control are protected. Although there were no existing certain critical ecological features on site, temporary drainage protection and the project perimeter is maintained throughout the construction phase to ensure that the immediate surroundings of the project are protected. And as I previously mentioned, mobility and spread transport orientation is a major highlight of Parkal. Parkal is accessible via alternative transport with transit stops, bicycle parking, and shower rooms, and wide pedestrianized streets to and from other streets of Asiana City. The project team also included recommendations to reduce the negative impact of the project to local traffic. Parkal has a close proximity to a minimum of 12 key establishments. There are three bus stops which cater to five routes within 500 meters from the project site. To preserve indoor air environment quality, Parkal will implement the no smoking policy. There are also exhaust and antimicrobial mats installed in the entryways of the nine buildings. Furthermore, 100% of the paints, primers, sealants, and adhesives used in the interiors of the projects have low VOC. For emissions, Parkal's project team made sure that no ODS or ozone depleting substances are used in the construction materials. So, one thing that's nice about Verde is that it gives you flexibility. You know, when I say flexibility, you know, as mentioned, you can't get all the points. So, Bear did not just allow us to focus on the points that we wanted to prioritize, but also to propose special features that we wanted to put into the project to be able to get more points. And I think that's that's one of the major features or factors why we decided to choose Bear because it allowed us to uh, give out special, uh, to find special areas or special projects which we can propose to, uh, to get uh, further credits as well. The use of the ETFE canopy for the whole retail spine addresses the issue of pedestrian comfort. This climate protection strategy improves accessibility as it serves to cover the greenways, 
and protect users from direct sunlight and monsoon rain showers. The customizable ETF canopy adds both comfort and form to the project. After much deliberation and planning, including wind and UV studies, the project team determined the form and shape of the ETF that can best serve the project. With the wind and UV studies, the project team is confident that end users and pedestrians are protected by inclement weather and climate. One of the other key features of the ET canopy is that it has a UV index 2, which is the second lowest reading on the UV index scale. At UV2, there's a low risk of harm from unprotected sun exposure. Actually, in actual experience, being under the ETFE canopy effectively feels like you're under the shade of a tree. In terms of education, Arcal's green building features will inform building users on the strategies and solutions we use in promoting sustainable building. Green Building Promotion Program educates building users and visitors on featured green building strategies and solutions. Our cult project users will be informed on the sustainability strategies of the development and thus understand the value of green buildings in the strengthening the economy. It will also be used to inspire the community in green building sustainability. In terms of art, promotion, and preservation, Parcal will have a regular exhibition of urban art that celebrates Filipino heritage and culture from local Filipino artists. Parcal also has some multi-purpose facilities providing the community with generous spaces for non-commercial events and functions for public and social benefit. Parcal's amphitheater will be used by DMY's affiliate foundation, the KMBPFI, or the Katipunan ng mga mamamayan ng Bagong Paranaque Foundation Incorporated for community activities and other events. For our Farm to Market initiative, Parcal will provide a venue for local farmers and suppliers to offer their produce to the Asiana City Market. The fruits and vegetable kiosks will be organized and managed by a chosen cooperative of local farmers and suppliers. This means that priority is given to our local vendors, farmers, and suppliers. At present, we actually have already identified two farm NGOs to use our fruits and vegetable kiosks. In terms of active design, Parcal has exercise and activity areas and sports facilities to promote physical and mental wellness. Furthermore, our bicycle facilities have its own parking and shower areas specifically designed for employees who take bicycles to work to freshen up before coming to their respective offices. Parcal is committed to provide spaces to encourage a healthy work-life balance through opportunities within and outside the workplace for rest and recreation. Building Green is a timely and relevant solution for the built environment. Fair certification program provides a sound local framework for decision and policy making, implementation, and recognition for building green. You know, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, we're obviously in the early stages of our ESG journey. And uh, we just felt that Parcal is, I think, one of the major implement implementation strategies that we could promote to ensure that we do in the right track and that Verde we find is, I think, the best local certification program to be able for, to us to fully document and utilize our strategies and to be able to inspire and teach, you know, other um, developers with this types of project. You know, I'd like to thank the, the Phil GBC for actually assisting us and uh, in a way holding our hands while we go through this process and being open to the recommendations and the uh, um, studies and the uh, um, suggestions that we wanted to implement in the project. Um, you know, I mean, again, moving forward or in as much as we're building um, this commercial mixed use project, you know, we're building a city and um, I'd like to think that um, in a way when you're building a city, you know, in the end, you want your citizens to be happy. And that's why I always think about this book, Happy City. And it says that, you know, for residents and for citizens to be happy, um, they need interconnection with each other and to be able to have spaces where they can gather and meet and find a way to, um, to communicate and commune with each other. And I think that's what we're trying to do with Work Parcal. So, you know, Parcal is uh, hopefully will finish by end of this year to first quarter next year. And we'd like to, invite uh, all of you to uh, visit Parka and to visit Asiana City. Um, thank you every day. Thank you guys and uh, have a good day to uh, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Wenceslao. May I now invite our speakers to turn on your uh, 
cameras and join us for the open forum for this episode. For this uh, open forum, Mr. Antonio Ilaga will join us in behalf of Mr. Wenceslao. Mr. Antonio Ilaga is the planning and design head of the M. Wenceslao Associates Incorporated. Good morning, Sir Anthony. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Sir Francis. So for our questions, uh, I think we have questions here from our participants. Um, okay, for for Sir Anthony, how did you prioritize your sustainability targets for the project and what were the considerations when selecting the appropriate green strategies for the project? Oh, sorry, can you repeat the question again? Uh, how did you prioritize your sustainability targets for the project and what were the considerations um when selecting the appropriate green stat strategies for your project you know, uh, actually we think of the park green building, green building features as a prime objective of the project and um uh, there are certain steps involved when we're doing the design and of course in alignment of the sustainability efforts especially for birthday so um, number one is we really wanted to make sure that uh, the users uh, are 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 uh, informed on the strategies. We want to make sure that uh, we have these solutions in promoting promoting our sustainable buildings. Um, we also wanted to make sure that uh, the green building uh, strategies and solutions are informed to the users, of course, to the visitors, um, and then. Um, there are actually three major features. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, when we're focusing on and de developing the the uh, uh, factors, we want to make sure that we achieve the resource efficiency in, in energy consumption and water consumption. Um, we want also to enhance the social responsibility through, again, public mobility. As you may see, we have uh, invested in a public space uh, uh, set up where we constructed an ETF e-roofing just to make sure, just to uh, take the pedestrian comfort into a new level. And of course, number three is we want to make sure that we comply on ecological responsibility through such as uh, uh, waste management procedures of the general contractor. Thank you, Sir Anthony. For uh, Sir Francis for Latitude Corporate Center, um, how did you think uh, can other project owners or developers or decision makers overcome the perceived challenges before they even start building things? Sir Francis? Um, I'm sorry, you, I got cut off. Uh, you were saying about... Yeah, so uh, for uh, Latitude um, or for Cebu Land Masters, how do you think um, can other sorry, project owners... Sorry, can you repeat that again, that question? Yeah. For um, how do you think uh, can other project owners or developers or decision makers overcome the perceived challenges before they even start building green? Sir Francis? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I. I'm just hearing partial audio. Can you repeat again? I'm sorry for that. Yes. Okay. Let me just uh, repeat again. Um, yeah, this one is better. This one is better. Yeah, I can hear you. So, how do you think can other project owners uh, or developers uh, overcome the perceived challenges before they even start building green? Yeah. Like, again, no. We can. We can uh, have this whole day debate on uh, whether to consider uh, green building uh, principles. 
uh, for us, uh, we reap the rewards uh, greatly when we take into consideration at an early stage. So it might have an upfront cost of uh, about a certain percentage, but the benefits outweighs uh, way, way uh, than the projected uh, normal operating uh, costs, meaning uh, we subject uh, our designs to, to principles wherein we take into consideration me, uh, savings, uh, consumptions on, on energy, on water. We deal with efficiency at all times uh, during the operational cost. So we try to relay that to our tenants, to, to our stakeholders that uh, in, in, in taking up in a, uh, a green building uh, or being located at a green building or certified green building uh, uh, latitude corporate center, uh, you, you are more or less you are assured that the systems that you're enjoying are the systems that we take or we, we already accounted for in taking care of our resources in our natural environment. So I think also in the policies that we've uh, employed or we we share with our tenants or locators, they I get responses that they really appreciate uh, why we're going into this type of uh, practice, meaning they're already aware that uh, uh, by doing this, by applying, uh, adhering to the principles of uh, energy consumption, they will also uh, benefit towards their own practice, their own operations as a business locator. Thank you for your answer, Mr. Francis. Um, we have here a question from um, Clary Limdiko. Uh, the question is for Sir Anthony. Um, what are the other future proof features of Parcal? Sir Anthony. Sir Anthony, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh there, there are key steps uh, involved on the future proofing now. Um, the, the use of, of course, the, the number one uh, material that we use, the, the, the number one material that we highlighted is the ETFE roofing. Uh, the ETFE roofing is a new technology. It's a fluorine-based plastic. Uh, it has high corrosive resistance. It has a high strength over wide temperature. It's a great alternative to glass. And uh, basically, it was used on the Beijing Olympics. It was also used in Cebu International Airport and some projects uh, internationally. Basically, um, again, as mentioned earlier, uh, the future proof includes we want to make sure that the pedestrian comfort was uh, is, uh, into a uh, higher level. We also, um, after so many del deliberations of all of these wind and UV studies that the project team has determined, um, is we want to highlight the uh, educational uh, information of the green building features uh, to, to building owners. We, we, we also want to, to provide green building promotion programs. Uh, we also highlighted that the strategies should be understandable to everyone, to every uh, public. Uh, and of course, we want to make sure that, and we highlight the community that the green building features are doable and attainable. Thank you for that uh, answer, Sir Anthony. Um, for um, we have here a question um, for both projects, um, um, Latitude and Parcal. Since the project is a new building, uh, and we know green features will not be effective if not properly operated, what strategy did you put in place to ensure that your tenants and your uh, end users uh, will effectively and properly use? The green, uh, the green features of your project. Uh, let's start with um, Sir Francis. Yeah, so I think now to ensure that the, 
the green building principles are followed to to the letter i think uh, from an application uh, point of view when locators are submitting plans for us to approve uh, we already recommend uh, strategies as to how they will align to our operation or manual uh, guidelines so our property management group uh, we have a very strong property management wherein they are already aligned with uh, the the principles that uh, my team has set meaning uh, even up even after the approval stage during the implementation or during the uh, operation of those tenants there is a monthly uh, uh, inspection from our property management group seeing uh, making sure that those systems those plans specifications that we approve are properly are or are cascaded or are really the actual specs that they really purchased or plan or are using in their units so there's really that monitoring uh, from our group and then apart from the monitoring uh, we set out uh, uh, notices for them if they are like deficient in some aspects we send them notices as to for them to be able to comply and adjust or calibrate uh, if, if needed uh, on their units on their specifications Thank you, Sir Francis. Uh, Sir Anthony? Um, answer? Yeah. Hello. Again, um, uh, thank you for the, the, the question again. Uh, again, as, 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 as discussed with you by, IC, by our CEO through the video that uh, we gave you, um, Berde is not just about getting points. Uh, it's, it's a master developer. Uh, Berde has allowed us to look at the bigger picture and find more agile and uh, sustainable solutions in the green building. We work hand in hand with, from the very onset of the, of the, of the operation, we work in hand with the mall operations. Um, we also aligned on the design guidelines and uh, uh, reviews uh, of, the, of the mall operations and property management. We also wanted to align, of course, respecting the commissioning agents uh, on the right and best use of using the, the building equipments and compliance to the proposed plans. We also initiated and started initial plan, plan reviews uh, to make sure that every uh, tenant will be guided accordingly. And of course, uh, the mall operations will also initiate uh, town hall meetings in making sure that the um, uh, operations of the building are maintained properly and future-proofing the building. So, uh, one uh, last question for both our, our speakers. Um, we would like to know, our participants would like to know, what's in store in the future for your project, Parkal and Latitude, uh, when it comes to sustainability? Uh, Sir Francis? Yeah, what's in store for Latitude uh, in the future is that, uh, well, Apart from having the five star, we are really hoping that, or we are, we really want to set uh, uh, like a practice that uh, during the operations, uh, getting towards uh, another stage for us to be rated. Uh, we hope that the 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 principles and the objectives that we had in mind are really carefully, and we fully adopt it culture that we're in uh, it sets standards to all of our projects latitude being the 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 model uh, the model bird for us meaning uh, we can we can benchmark CLI can benchmark on birdie practices based on uh, how we were able to achieve our birdie rating now apart from that uh, we make sure that our tenants 
uh, future tenants also adhere to Verde principles. So, you know, the nice thing about going green nowadays is that global warming is really a reality. It's not only uh, a documentary stamp. Uh, we look into magazines and publishings, but it's happening all around us. So we look into Latitude as a perfect example that uh, we are a responsible developer. And then we take into account developments that will carefully measure, use natural resources or resources that needs uh, uh, specific management and then carefully address them uh, during the operations. And uh, hopefully, you know, when we... Francis, I think we lost your audio. That's it for Latitude and Sibulan Masters. Thank you, sir, uh, Francis. Uh, we look forward to the next certification for your project for Latitude. Um, thank you. Thank you. Sir, sir, yes, thank you. Sir Anthony, same question. Um, what's in store in the future uh, when it comes to sustainability for Parkal? Thank you for the question. So again, at the end of the day, we are we are very early in the stages of our ESG journey, and uh, Parkal is an interpretation and symbol of what the company is uh, trying to promote and develop, which is again livability and happiness in the cities. Um, Again, they need to be physically interact with each other. So as much as we are building uh, offices and condo, we believe that our project, Parkal, can help increase the interconnections of uh, between ASEAN City's residents and hopefully making them uh, happier. Um, at the end of the day, of course, we Parkal, Parkal's main goal is to inspire the community in building green and sustainability uh, and um, again, we want to make sure that the sustainability strategies are developed and then understand the full value of green buildings in strengthening our economy. Thank you, Sir Anthony. Thank you once again to uh, Sir Francis, uh, Mr. Delphine Angelo Wenceslao, and Sir Anthony for sharing on your sustainability performance for your uh, Beardy certified green building projects. Thank you for participating in the discussion. And if you have further questions for our speakers, please contact the PhilGBC National Secretariat at BG2022 at philgbc.org. So we can coordinate with our speakers after, uh, after the event. Now we'll have uh, Ms. Rowena Ramos, uh, Vice Chair uh, of the Board of Trustees of the PhilGBC and Principal of Ecotectonica to officially close this episode. Ms. Ramos. Thank you very much, Ms. Elida. Thank you to all participants of this morning's BG 2022 episode 10, The Bear the Day. Thank you to all our speakers for sharing your experience and insight. For the pilot projects for the Berdy Districts tool, Mr. Rafael Fernandez de Mesa, president of Lima Land Inc., shared putting sustainability at the forefront of Aboitis development, expanding, elevating, and transforming how we do business. From Mr. John T. Huang, executive vice president of City Home Builders and Development Inc., said, why not? We can, we should, and so we did in going for better districts, given the challenges, and in seeking continuous improvement. Ms. Cristina Samantha Pobre, Sustainability Manager of Artland Corporation, shared their commitment to sustainability initiatives, whether for big or small developments. And from Mr. Don Don Marie Obaldo, first Vice President of Phil Invest Alabang Inc., 
commitment to sustainability and meeting the balance between respect to ecology and doing business. From the bed, the certified projects, we heard from Mr. Francis Rodriguez, Technical Planning Manager of Cebu Landmasters, Inc. Through BERDE, everything is accounted for, and the value of transparency supported the target of achieving the world-class BERDE Five Stars, an important milestone and is now a benchmark for CLI projects. Mr. Delfin Angelo Wenceslao, CEO of DM Wenceslao and Associates, BERDE is one of our strategies to communicate our focus on sustainability and our commitment to the community. Anthony Ilaga, Head of Planning and Design of DM Wenceslao and Association, thank you for joining us in the open forum. Thank you to our member developers, Lima Land Inc., City Homes Builder and Development Inc., Arthaland Corporation, and Phil Invest Alabang Inc. for participating in the pilot implementation of the Berde Districts. Congratulations, Lima Estate, Leora Homes Naik, Savina Park, and Phil Invest City for achieving Berde Districts certification. Thank you to Cebu Land Masters Inc. and Ashana Holdings Inc. for demonstrating your leadership in sustainability. And congratulations to Latitude Corporate Center and Parkal Phase 1 for successfully achieving the Berde Buildings certification. As our leading project developers shared their technological and regulatory challenges to certification and their unique project strategies, we hope you learned from their experience and apply these key action points to your own projects. We hope you are inspired and motivated to push forward with your green building and your green district projects. We invite developers to participate and register your projects for Berdi Buildings, we have Berdi Buildings version 4.2.0 and for districts, Berdi Districts version 1.0.0. Visit berdionline.org for more information. We encourage consultants to learn more about Berdi and have a conversation with your clients and your team to pursue green building. And lastly, we invite you to join our online certification trainings this week. Thank you to our BG 2022 sponsors and your sustained support. Gold Strategic Partner, NIO, Aboitis Infracapital Economic Estates, City Homes Builders and Development Inc. For our Silver Strategic Partner, we have Wall Vision Corporation, Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines Inc., First Balfour Inc. Our Bronze Strategic Partner, Monocrete Construction Philippines Inc., Botanica Nature Residences, Phil Invest City, FPD Asia, AGC Asia Pacific, Dayton Incorporated. Join us in our upcoming episodes. This afternoon, we have two more episodes. Episode 10, The Better Day Retail Districts for Phil GBC members only at 1.30 in the afternoon, followed by Episode 10, The Better X3 for CBPs only at 3.30 in the afternoon. We have episode 11, The Professionals, Bed the Buildings. This is on September 20 and 21. Episode 12, The Professionals, Bed the Districts on 22 and 23 of September. And next week, our last week of BG 2022, episode 13, The Green Financing. That is on Monday, September 26 at 9 in the morning. And episode 14, The Advancing Net Zero on September 26, 1.30. Episode 15, The Professionals for ANZPH, September 27 at 8 in the morning. And join us in our closing episode, episode 16, The Closing, on Friday, September 30 at 10 in the morning. Visit philgbc.org for more information or contact the PhilGBC National Secretariat at bg2022 at philgbc.org. Once again, thank you for your participation in this morning's episode 10, the Berde Day. See you in the afternoon as we continue the Berde Conversation. <music>